All right, welcome to the Success for Life podcast. I'm here with John Egan, and today, today, actually, and I pulled up the wrong image on there because, of course, that's what I, I after I fixed everything, let me just get this right. Um, we're going to talk <laughs> about studying failure. There it is. There it is. Uh, studying failure. We're going to discuss that today. Um, and uh, a topic, obviously, everybody has to deal with mm-hmm. at some point. Yep. Um, and John is here to, to kind of tell us a little more about what he's found out in, in his time and just studying this topic. Um, and we'll dive into, you know, what, what causes failure, how to overcome it and, and, and where, you know, where do you go from there? Yep. Um, welcome John. Dude, coach, I appreciate you, man. I mean, we were, before we even hit record, we were just talking about football and, uh, I feel like both of us were like, all right, we, like, we could just talk for this whole entire time on just about football. Like, but let's maybe focus on something at least for a little bit. And then if we want to later, we can make that shift later. (laughs) That's right. That's right. Well, you know, it's always fun talking, talking sports and, and uh, there's no doubt uh, that that's like, just becomes like a pure joy. Right. So, um, so tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, We talked a little bit beforehand about it, but I'd like everybody to really know in depth uh, more about you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, grew up my whole life playing sports. Uh, absolutely love sports. And before I can even remember, honestly, coach, I I was like, man, I want to be, I want to be a basketball coach. That's that's my goal. Like that's that's my one A right there is to be a basketball coach or strength and conditioning coach. One of those, right? And so. Uh, I played basketball in high school. Was was blessed uh, enough to then play basketball in college, and again with the whole goal of becoming a coach. And and then I graduated from college uh, after after playing four years basketball uh, up at a, a school up in Wisconsin, and moved down to Greenville, South Carolina, and where I, uh, I then was a lead basketball skills trainer. And so I was training guys from, you know, little kids, elementary age school kids to guys who were playing uh, division one guys who were playing overseas and kind of everything in between. And, and, um, and then, and this is like a long roundabout story, kind of where I, how, how I got to where I am today. And then I got married and uh, again, was the whole goal of like, Hey, I'm, I'm pushing forward to be, to coach, pushing forward to coach, pushing forward to coach because I was starting to make some really good connections uh, and then my wife and I, we, we unexpectedly got pregnant, uh, which my daughter, she's going to be turning five in May. She's the most wonderful thing. She's incredible. I still can't believe she's almost five. Um, but then that, that kind of caused like a little ripple in things, right. Of like, okay. Um, you know, what, what should I do now? So I ended up deciding to, uh, well got let go from there. Um, which was, which was tough. And then found just a normal job, like a sales job, and w- was there for six months, got let go from there. And then uh, and two weeks before I got let go from there, um, my daughter was born. And so my daughter was born, two weeks later, get let go. And uh, during this time, in my mind, I kind of started to internalize because I, I had now just gotten let go of a job two times in a row within a period of uh, maybe eight months. And so I kind of started to internalize like, okay, I'm, I'm failing at taking care of my family. If I'm failing at that, then that makes me a failure. And so I had this conversation kind of starting to go in my head. So then I'm out of a job for three months. Things are tough. Uh, but then I get a coaching opportunity in uh, Georgia. So then we moved on to Georgia, take a coaching job there. And we, I mean, it was really, really hard leaving, uh, moving down there. So we moved down there and again, struggled really, really hard. Then at the end of that year, the AD unexpectedly said, Hey, I'm going to take this coaching job. And I was like, what did I do wrong? He wouldn't give me any answer. And again, finally, and again, I started to internalize, man, I am failing at this. I am failing that. Therefore that makes me a failure, right? Mm. And so then we moved back to Greenville, South Carolina, where my wife's family is from. And I get a job, personal training, and I'm gone all the time. We're still struggling financially. Uh, I mean, we're at a point where there was, there was a point where like my father-in-law was walking us through the grocery store, like myself, my wife, my daughter walking us through the grocery store and purchasing us, purchasing groceries for us. 
I mean, talk about humiliating coach. I was humiliated. I was embarrassed. I was like, man, the one job that you guys put on me is to take care of your daughter. And I can't do that. I am failing at that. So again, all these things in my head started to be like, you're a failure, you're a failure, you're a failure. And so I was just then in this pit of like failing physically, failing emotionally, failing financially, failing spiritually. Therefore, I am a failure, right? Like I became that identity. So was struggling with that. Finally, um, through a lot of like, uh, again, job changes, finally found a job in sales again, just to be able to take care of my family. And I finally started to get out of this mindset because I'm like, this isn't helping anybody. Mm. Like me living in this is is not doing any good. So I started listening to podcasts, just putting like 10, even if it's a quick, gr- quick trip to the grocery store, putting my headphones in and listening to podcasts. And I started to realize coach that these really successful people that we look up to as heroes they failed a lot and in some really really big ways but it wasn't really ever talked about Hmm. right like we all want to know um okay like what does tom brady do in the morning or what did steve jobs do what was his morning ritual or oprah what was her habits like what were those habits we all want to know that which is great but what I, I was like, man, I feel like we're missing something. We're missing something so crucial. What did those people do after they failed? How did they respond? What did they even look at failure as? How did they even see failure? And I was like, man, this is so interesting. This, like, we're not really talking about this. This is a huge part of success, though. So then I started just realize and see these people, like how they viewed failure, how they looked at it, what they did, how they responded to it. And I was like, boom, that's the key to success right there is understanding what to do, how to respond, how to react, how to view your mind, you know, change your mind and view failure. That's the key to success. Like that little bit right there is going to totally set you apart from everybody else. Well, f- failure is a significant part of life, right? You got to, ah. you got to, you don't fail, you learn, right? So you got to learn from your failures. They happen all the time, and it's how you overcome that adversity. What, what are, what are some of the things that that you've learned from studying this, and and, and that you could share as as what people can do to start to overcome those things? Or right, and, and maybe before that, how do they? What, what are the things that contribute to people failing? First of all. Yeah. And then ha- and then I guess the second part is overcoming that and, and changing. Yeah, I I think so to let's focus on that first part, right? Like um re- repeat that again, sorry coach. Like you said things that contribute to them failing, right? Yeah. I think actually it's it's first and foremost it's viewing okay, um what is failure to me, right? Like because I th- like that can be totally different for each person, right? And, and it can be even be like small little failures on a day to day versus really big failures, you know, huge, you know, day to day. It's, um, you know, okay, my goal was to set, you know, to make a hundred dials today for X, whatever it might be. I only hit fifty. Okay, that means I I failed. I missed the mark, right? Like I did not reach that goal. Mm. You could look at it that okay, that's a failure. But the key is, okay, how do I view that failure? Am I looking at that as, oh, shoot, I failed at that. I didn't hit 50. This is why everything is going wrong because I, if only I could have done this. And then you start to be like, well, I had this come up throughout the day and this come up. And you start to just come up with all these excuses, which could be totally valid. Like right now, I'm working from home. I've got a uh, daughter who's almost five. I've got a six month old son and we're all cooped up in the same house. And so it can be really easy for me to just get caught up in things and come up with these, you know, excuses and whatever it is. Uh, But I think realizing, okay, what is failure to me? Like, what does that ultimately mean? And, and how am I going to now use that failure, that lesson to better myself tomorrow? And I think that's that's really key is number one, more than anything, becoming very, very self-aware of like what what is failure to me? 
why does why does it bother me when I do fail? And so being able to ask yourself those questions really first and foremost, um, that's going to start to like change your lens and help you mm. understand yourself on on how to look at failure. And then that's also going to help how you shape uh, success as well. Like those those two things, they go hand in hand, failure and success. Like oftentimes people think they're on opposite ends of the spectrum. Man, that's the farthest thing from the truth. Like they are the same. They're, they're two sides of the same coin failure and success. And so being able to understand one is going to help shape, uh, shape the other one as well. And, and, uh, from a learning standpoint, now, where do you go from there? So you failed, you got to pick yourself up. What, 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 what do people have to do? What have you done that that's helped? Yeah. So, um, two things, one, again, being very self-aware, um, but then also reflecting, spending time reflecting. And that doesn't have to be like, you know, for 15 minutes, I sit alone in a room all by myself where it's completely quiet. Because, man, if you're anything like me, gosh, trying to do that for like two minutes, <laughs> like that's, mm. that's tough enough, right? But I think for me, and this is something that I've done even without even thinking about it, heck, since I was college, is at the end of the day, I'm laying down in bed and I just reflect on the day. I just reflect and I say, okay, like, you know, where did I fail today? Where did I fall short? Um, Okay, what did I learn from that? And then how will then I use that new knowledge? How will I then use that to make tomorrow better? And putting yourself in positions to fail, putting putting yourself in positions where you are uncomfortable, that's going to help you grow as as a human being, even if it's something super, super, super small, so minuscule, but you're failing at it, you're falling short of it, and then you learn from it, you apply it to your day the next day, and then all of a sudden you stack all those up on each other, you keep stacking, stacking, stacking. Gosh, I mean, coach, you look back to where you were a year ago, two years from doing those things, man, you're going to be a totally different person, you know, going in a totally different direction. The, the, the key is um, in order to stack those successes, we, I think we overestimate um, what we can do in a day and we underestimate what we can do in a lifetime. Right. So yeah. just stacking those little successes, we're trying to, you know, get everything done right now and just get some successes each day. We'll get you towards, towards that end goal and we kind of worry too much about um what has to happen at the end instead of just worried about taking care of each thing each and every day yeah um, really re- really good point uh so t- t- tell me a little bit more about your study of this and are there like some key takeaways and some key learning things when, when studying failure yeah I, again i think i think it all goes back to self-awareness like being very self-aware and heck i mean when i was when i was playing basketball both high school and college man coach i beat myself up so badly even when i was on the court i'd miss a shot and i'd start to beat myself up i i i wouldn't box out or i'd miss a rebound i'd beat myself up turn the ball over beat myself up and by doing that by beating myself up I'm putting that whole focus on myself, right? I'm Mm -hmm. saying, oh, I'm the worst. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Whereas then if I'm able to step back and be like, okay, yeah, I missed a shot or I turn the ball over. Okay, next time this happens, maybe I don't look exactly to where I'm passing the ball, right? Maybe or just learn something from it. And by doing that, then you're, you're, you're caring more about the team and you're caring more about the end result rather than just yourself right? Like you're able to take that out. Um, and so again, just being very self-aware and, and reflecting, like those are the biggest things, um, that, that will help you help shift and shape your lens, your mindset on failure and on success. And I, I I heard this, I had someone on my show a while back coach. Uh, she's an author, her and her husband wrote a book called the purpose factor. If anyone is looking for a new book, Go check it out. It was on Yahoo's like top 20 books of um, of 2020. Like it's really, really good. And she said something to me. She said, um, she said, failure is redeemable for purpose. 
And coach, I just like, whoa, <laughs> like when she said that, and I absolutely loved it because that if, if we're able to see failure as it's redeemable for purpose, then it kind of takes the end result out of it. Like it right. really helps you focus on the process of it because no matter if you fail or you succeed, as long as you're learning from it, that's okay. And even your failure can help somebody else learn from it. And that's redeemable for purpose. And so being able to see failure as, man, I'm not so focused on the end result. It's all part of the process. It's all part of it. Like it, it takes the pressure of, oh, I got to succeed. I got to succeed. I got to succeed. I got to succeed. It's like, yes, you do. Like you don't want to string 12, 15, 100 failures together, right? Like you need to, you need to be successful, but don't get so bogged down in each and every, in each and every failure. Yeah. I think that, um, being hard on yourself and uh, some of the most driven people, that's the issue is they're so hard on themselves that, that when they fail, uh, it, it's hard for them to get the gather themselves. They're expecting perfection. And we're not, we're not searching for perfe uh, perfection because perfection is impossible. Um, you're, you're looking to do the very best you can and then adapt when that doesn't work out and then do the very best you can. Again, I think that's, I think that's the key. And I think, um, what do you think about like, so the self-awareness, I think is a key part of it. Um, the self-awareness help you with, let me think of the best way to put this, um, your, your conscious understanding of putting something that goes wrong into a box and then not compartmentizing it versus letting it become all encompassing. Like you realize, okay, this happened and I contributed to it in this way or someone else contributed to it as well. Being able to compartmentize that, being self-aware of what you did and then what uh, others have done and then and then figuring out what the, the best solution might be there. So um, I think that's an important part of it. And um, uh, yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's really, really critical. So what, what do you think about that? I mean, it, wh where do these things tie in? Like is compartmentizing failure? Is, is this part of the process? Well, yeah, I, th I think where self-awareness really, really steps in and, and helps you is that one, it helps you not identify as a failure because you're able to just, um, you're able to understand that, okay, you're almost able to take yourself out of it. Like you're almost able to step back and help. It help, really helps you understand that like, okay, yes, I failed. Why did I fail? Why does it bother me when I fail? What am I going to learn from this failure? And, and, and the thing is coach, it's, it's not, I'm not saying, and, and I hope people don't take this, take this away. I'm not saying that like we should overly be like, yeah, woohoo, I failed. Yeah. Like this is great right. and be excited about it. Or, or like, you know, like I said earlier, you don't want to string together like 10, 15, 20, 30 failures. Like you need to string some successes in there. <laughs> like, or else like if you're a business and you just fail, 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 like you're going right. to shut down. Right. <laughs> or like right. if you're playing sports and you just lose, 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 that coach is going to lose his job. Like, right. <laughs> like that's going to happen. But what I am saying is that where self-awareness can step in is that again, you're able to take a step back from that current situation and say, okay, what did I learn from this? Why does it bother me when I fail? Be am I embarrassed about it? Am I do it? Do I feel like I'm being judged from it? And you're able to just like ask yourself these questions. And by doing that, then you start to realize that like, man, like, okay, maybe this isn't as big a deal as I thought it would be. Or, in the sense of like, okay, again, you ask yourself, okay, what did I learn from this? Oh, I learned this. Or, or maybe like, okay, I, um, you, you try to start a business, right? And you try to open up a gym and it's just not clicking for you. Whatever it is, it's just not clicking. And you ask yourself like, man, why, why is this not clicking? Why am I, why is my gym failing? And you could ask yourself and realize like, 
I actually don't like this part of the gym or actually hate this part. And then by doing that, then you can either maybe bring someone else in on your team who does like that part, or heck, you could even just say, nah, you know what? I'm just going to shut this down because I really don't like it as much as I thought that I did. And, and again, like it, that's, that's where self-awareness helps you is that it just, it helps you realize what you've learned from it, how you can then apply it to the next day, to the next situation. Uh, just by asking yourself those questions, like taking, gosh, taking two minutes at the end of the day when you're laying in bed and asking yourself those questions. Well, just again, it's minuscule, but man, it's going to make all the difference. Uh, yeah, I, I think absolutely. I think a huge part is, and we talk about, you know, you can't string together a bunch of failures. How do you accelerate the learning process? Do you have any tools for that? Accelerating the learning process so you fail less or they're or they're smaller failures until you get to the successes what what, what is well i th- i think i think that right there um is is where i think that right there is where is, is even a, a little misconception right to success is because okay like people often say like failure is not an option i i, I disagree i 100 percent think I know that failure is an option. Like it mm-hmm. is, it absolutely is. And so if we're going to fail, when we know that we're going to fail, we're, we know we're going to put ourselves in those positions to fail. Let's learn from that. And then we're going to apply that learning to the next situation and where we're going to succeed, we're, we're going to be successful in. And we're just going to like, we're just going to keep moving, man. Like we are moving, moving, moving. Yes, I succeed in this. Now I have a different goal. That goal is a little bit outside of my comfort zone. So I got to push myself to where I might fail, where I might be uncomfortable, where I might make a mistake, whatever it might be. I might look like an idiot, but that's okay because I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. Then I'm going to apply it to my next situation. And I'm just like, I'm pushing forward and I'm not one, I'm not getting bogged down by each and every failure that happens because I know that like, yep, I failed at that. I learned from this. Boom. I'm on to the next one. Right. And, and something that I tell people a lot is, um, okay, you failed. Yes. That sucks. Failure hurts. It's painful. I've been there. I've lived it. My, my family has lived it and it sucks. So do what you need to do in the sense of, sit in that failure, sit in that pain, whether it's five minutes, whether it's an hour, heck, whether it's 24 hours. But during that time, you set a timer for yourself. You set a timer for 15 minutes. For those 15 minutes, you're going to sit in that, you're going to sit in that pain of failure. You're going to sit in that pain of whatever it might be. And you're going to really dive into it. And you're really going to try to understand it. And you're really going to ask yourself those tough questions. Once that timer goes off, though, boom, it's done. It's behind you. You learn from it. You're on to the next one. And you you, you don't sit in that failure anymore once that timer goes off. Like You are just continuously moving forward. So I think, I think that's the biggest thing right there, Coach, is just understand that you are going to fail. And when you do, try to just ask yourself those questions and move through those as quick as possible. And then you're applying that to your life and you're again, trying it again. This time you're going to succeed at it. Okay. What did I learn from that success? Boom. Now you're going to move on again. You might fail again and that's okay. Ask yourself those questions. Boom, 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 boom. I'm going to succeed. Boom. I'm going to succeed again. Boom. I'm going to fail. I might fail two or three times in a row, but that's okay. What am I learning? What am I taking away from it? Boom. I'm going to succeed. And again, you're just you're just moving. You're just continuously striving and moving forward and improving. Last question: mentorship. Where does mm. mentorship fall into all this and, and and help you in this process? Mentorship. That's a great question, Coach. Um, I think having having a mentor helps you realize, uh, like someone who's been there before, someone who's done it before, helps you realize that. Like those failures along the way, again, like they're going to happen, right? Like they are going to happen. Those losses along the way are going to happen. And having that, having someone who's been there, who's walked in those shoes will help you, will help you talk through that. Like, Hey, like this is okay. It's all part of it. What did you learn from it? And then able to help you verbalize it. 
able to ask you those questions and then able to help you kind of work through the process of it. So I think being able to have a mentor that can ask you those tough questions uh, is absolutely huge in helping you understand that, yeah, losses happen, failure happens, but what did you learn from it? Why did that happen? And let's just keep moving forward. How can you apply it to the next situation? Yeah, I think someone else's experience certainly can help you, especially accelerate um, on the learning process. Well, I really appreciate you coming on today. It was great having you. I learned a ton. Um, tell everybody where they can find you, find out about you, get in touch with you. Yeah. Uh, so my podcast, Studying Failure, you can find it wherever you listen to podcasts, uh, Apple, Spotify, Audible, Stitcher, wherever. Uh, you can also go on to my website, studyingfailure.com, um, Instagram, Studying Failure. Um, and yeah, that's uh, th- those are kind of the hubs. Cool. What would you say? Studyingfailure.com? Studyingfailure.com. Yes, sir. And do you do like any coaching with anybody or anything like that? Or what is it? How, how, how do you make the living? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, all this is great, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've I've got some. Uh, I've one. I've got some things that I'm working on right now, as far as coaching and as far as developing, as far as even like a journal that I'm that I'm working on to that will walk you through these questions and will help you set goals for the day. Will help you then reflect and what questions you should ask. Uh, so I'm working on that. Um, yeah. So I've just I've got a number of things that are in the works right now. Uh, that'll be coming out. So if you head on over to my website, studyingfailure.com, um, and uh, and again, and just you, there's there's something yeah that you can download on there called uh, download from uh, um, learning from famous failures. You can download that, and then that'll kind of keep you in the loop on on anything uh, coming up here uh, shortly. Actually, that I'm that I'm working on. Perfect. So go to studyingfailure.com. We'll put that in the show notes uh, at studying failure right at Instagram. Yeah, uh, Twitter as well, or anything like that. Uh, Twitter is just uh, Twitter is John Egan. Uh, Twitter Johnny. is just my name. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that, that's where I live, brother. Awesome. Well, another great episode, of successful life podcast. Thank you, John, for coming on the show. Um, you guys can, if you like these episodes, like, subscribe. I don't understand the YouTube algorithm, but I guess <laughs> this is what you're supposed to say at the end of every podcast. <laughs> Um, probably at the beginning, I probably should have said it as well, but, uh, like, and subscribe, follow, follow John Egan, uh, f- follow me at coach human everywhere, everywhere you can search, you can find it there and you can go and listen to it. If you want to listen to it again, um, on iTunes, uh, Spotify, you name it, it's on there. And, uh, thanks John for being on the podcast. Coach, appreciate you coming on, uh, bringing me on brother. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> My pleasure. My pleasure. Yes, sir. <laughs>